Hello friends, we are going to look at the Lady Chancellor Hill and St. Anne's. Both areas are north of the savannah. Right now we are heading towards the savannah coming out of Marval. Uh, we're just passing the Cape Ock Hotel on the left there. Ministry of Agriculture, I believe, on the right. And this hill on the left here that leads into a mountain, we're going to take that road first. This is the Queen's Park Savannah. It's a large park on the right. We're going to turn here and then turn immediately again. A lot of people like to park here because they want to go and uh, run or exercise or whatever have you. That's the Ministry of Agriculture. I believe the Ombudsman is also there too. But this road here, these are all public roads, publicly accessible roads. We're going to explore some of them in case you have never been up on this side. Um, on, on the top right here, this I believe is Brian Lara's home. That's the cricketer. Those of you who don't know what cricket is, it's a sport that involves bat and ball. But it's not like baseball because the ball can hit the ground before it reaches the batsman. Anyway, I'm not go going to go into cricket too much. But anyway, we are passing by Brian Lara's home. It's public knowledge that his home is here. It was given, I believe, as a gift from the government for his achievement in cricket. And I don't have an invitation, so we just keep into the public accessible roads. Normally, you would have to um, go in through that gate there, I guess, past security or whatever have you. It's also another entrance to it coming up on the left here which I'll pretend to go into just for you to see it sometimes he does have fets so in the past he used to have fets so that would be the entrance but I haven't seen it him have that for a while because I guess of COVID and whatnot but anyway it's a splendid view that he has overlooking the savannah and Port of Spain in general up ahead, that would take you to the animal prison, better known as the Emperor Valley Zoo. Why do I call it an animal prison? Well, I'm vegan, so I don't believe that animals should be put in cages on display. And I know some would argue, well, oh, they get treatment, they get whatever. Nah, animals deserve to be free. Would you go in a side of a 10 by 10 cell and live the rest of your life while other people examine you, look at you, pay to see you. No, you would want to be free, and so do the animals. But anyway, this video is not about veganism, it's about Nags Hill, uh, Lady Chancellor Hill, we're going to go to Nags Hill and so forth, and about St. Anne. So let's stick to that. On the right here, that's the um, Horticultural Society. Normally they have shows there for plants. Um, you know, a lot of ornamental or for want of a better word, layman's word, fancy plants, plants that you would not see readily and that you have to pay for. If you haven't been to their shows, you should. It's, you see quite a number of exotic looking plants. Anyway, so this is the start of our road trip. We're going to try and visit as many of these roads as possible. I believe this is Nags Hill. And this would also take you to a place where Wasa, I believe, stores water. You can see the enormously big storage tanks over there. The background. Not sure if it's an operation or not. Looks rather abandoned. So we some body to leave some sort of trash around. So this area is just north of the Queen's Park Savannah, within the area of Port of Spain, which is the capital city of a place called Trinidad, which is an island in the Caribbean. It's part of a country known as Trinidad and Tobago, which is two islands, but we're on the larger island, which is Trinidad. So many houses up here are really nice. They look like mansions, especially that one in the background. 
not this immediate one on the foreground but the background some of them have a modern look some of them keep that old colonial look now keep in mind this particular picture right now i'm going to stop it here because if we go right which we will that will take us back to the queen's park savannah but the trip is really continuing left which will go further up lady chancellor hill however we're going to go right because i want you to see what it's like for most people when they come in these areas normally they will come somewhere around here because they're going to the horticultural society or this or the um, animal prison or whatever and they want to turn around and they would see this so i wanted you to see this because by the end of the video you will not have had a chance to see this so really in this first part i'm going to show you two entrances and then i'm going to come back to where we stopped it and continue the road trip by the way on for those of you who don't know jb's man cave is about showing the raw showing things as they are it's not meant as a brochure a tourist video or anything like that however People who are unfamiliar with the area, for instance, if you're living in South or you're living in Tobago and you intended to come to Trinidad or you're, you're even from outside of the country and you wanted to see what certain areas are like, well, my videos are great for that. I show it as it is, what you would expect to see. I know people love to edit, edit cut artifacts effects and whatnot to spruce up their videos to make it look like, you know, it's, an, it's a literal paradise, but it isn't in some stages. Around here by the Queen's Park Savannah is really nice. Uh, once it's maintained and kept, it's beautiful. On the left there would be the Botanical Gardens, which is pretty much maintained and very beautiful. One of the tourist spots that people like to come and see. And on the right is the Queen's Park Savannah, which is one of the biggest parks in the Western Hemisphere. Coming up on your left there too uh, is the president's house, the president of the country. And on the left there again is the president's ground. Some people will come there to have wedding photos done and so forth. This part here on the left there would be the entrance where the regiment, the military, guards the president. It's a little small park here that has hardly ever been used. And I'm not, I'm not sure if it's part of the... Queen's Hall, which is a place for shows. It's a roundabout there on the right. So this is the other entrance. This entrance is, goes to St. Anne's and Cascade. And on the left there is Queen's Hall. Again, I'm showing you this because this is what normally people will see. But in our road trip, we're going all the back roads. So, you know, I didn't want you to miss this. On the right there, that is the um, Hilton Hotel. It's a massive building. On the left here is President's grounds. They have rugby matches. And on the right there was the Boy Scout headquarters. So you see, we're back here at the same spot again, right? We had went right last time, but now we're going left. So we can continue the road trip. So going up. This is an ascent heading north. Some people like to come here to do a lot of walking, hiking, jogging, because it's continuously uphill and it even goes further up on a, to a hiking on a bike mountain biking uh, trail continuing on the right but we're going to visit some of these public roads to see what it's like just to get an idea of the area those of you who probably lived up here once and haven't been for a while too may, may also like to see what the area is like now Uh, some some people have re, of recent have been referring to my videos as documentaries, but these are not. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would call these documentaries. And in a documentary, I normally like to think that you know, you are talking about the history of the area and you stopped for interviews and that type of thing. But that's not what I do in my videos. Um, I just I'm picking up video footage of public accessible areas that I drive and while I do so I comment in my earlier videos I did not comment 
on the areas I visited, but people kept nagging me to do that, and so I do it. But I can only do it based on my own knowledge, because in addition to that, I am not a historian. I know some people seem to think that I should be given more historical facts and whatnot, but I am not a historian, nor do I claim to be. So in my videos, I am not a historian, I am not a tourist guide, and I am not creating tourist videos. I am just showing you raw footage of areas that I go to or have been. That's what my videos are about. It's a layman's view to show you uh, what you would see if you were there with me in the truck. This is what you would see. And that's the kind of environment I actually try to create with my videos to give you the perspective of, hey, if you was riding with me in a truck, this is what we would see, you know? Splendid view from here. You're getting Port of Spain, and you're getting some of the West, there, St. James, Woodbrook, etc. Some lovely houses up here. And I love residences that have lots of green. See how all, so much green? And in a lot of my other footage, you would notice that um, there's just so much concrete and hardly any green. There should be more green. I mean, when I was growing up, there was way more green. But now it's just like everything is just concrete all the time. Sometimes you see these hidden roads, but you really don't know what they're about. Unless it says private, I usually just um, follow it just to have a look where it takes me until it can't take me anywhere anymore. And I just turn around. Um, sometimes people say, oh, you should create a video about here or there or wherever. And a lot of times I've already done so. Um, it's an interesting gate, isn't it? Like all the other whole, the green surrounds it. Um, but I have already created those videos. And really you need to look on my YouTube channel for them. Um, recently I was looking at a mobile phone. I, I have a dislike for mobile phones. I use my PC computer, desktop computer for all my internet browser and you know browser results and so forth. I, I just hate looking at phones. But I know some of you love to use your phones. Recently I was looking um, on YouTube with based on a mobile device and realized that there was no apparent area where you could readily search just my channel the search was always for youtube in general so the easier way let me advise you is try looking at a laptop a pc computer something with a large screen there are way more options for you when you watch these videos, if you do that. Um, for instance, you will find easily a search for my channel, which you don't see on mobile devices. So what I'm trying to say in general is if, if you only use mobile devices, you can't find one of my videos for a certain area, just say in the comments area, I will make sure to link you up. See how nice it is up here? As you're going up, you could see some of these huge retaining walls, how they did the landscaping and stuff. And you saw where we passed one or two people walking. Like I said, it's a place that a lot of people use for walking, hiking, jogging, whatnot. However, if you do that, I suggest you do it in groups. Do not come up here alone. And more especially, do not come up here in the evening alone because it is for me isolated there was recently a u.s travel advisory i don't know if you heard about it but they were giving warnings about being in the queen's park savannah in the 
night time, the inner part. And I would give that same advice about coming up to certain areas in Trinidad. May seem nice, may seem quiet, but remember these are all public accessible roads, so anybody could come up here and anybody could be lurking. So be cautious, don't do silly things. You know, if you're doing things, do it in a group. Really nice up here, isn't it? It's the more, do I call it wealthy part of Trinidad? Can't go much here, so I'm just gonna turn around. We've actually come up here before to record some videos um, not related to JB's man kid. I think we did one for autism and different other things. My wife has a channel for autism uh, and we came up here where she was recording all the videos and so forth. Just love the trees. Maybe you can't tell too well, but there's a really, really nice scenes up here. See how it is on the right there? Really nice. Actually, I do have a video showing me record, uh, recording that area. Make sure to look for it on my YouTube channel. I'm showing you the poster for it. Again, if you can't find something, just say so in the comments area. I'll look for it for you because, you know, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel and sometimes it even perplexes me to try and find something. So, I know how it is. Just let me know what you're trying to find. I'll try to link you up. Look at the landscaping here. It's really nice. You know, it shows the variety of plants and stuff we have here, flowers. We have lots to show off here in Trinidad. Eh? One thing, let me tell you, do you see the, the actual country itself? Now, I'm not talking about country as in Trinidad and Tobago and the name and the flag and whatnot. I'm talking about the actual land, the actual wildlife, the actual biodiversity. We are really blessed to have this place. I mean, it's really nice. And I, you know, in my youth, I used to hike up and down camp, all these mountains and stuff. So I know the other side of the country. And it's really nice. We don't suffer from any major earthquakes, any major hurricanes or storms like other islands. We have a lot of beautiful places, but you know, ah, humans, they always come in and just spoil everything, you know. Cordon off areas, put up concrete, throw their trash and whatnot. But other than that, really beautiful so we are just stopping here for some reason probably sometimes somebody in the vehicle with me because usually in these road trips i'm traveling my family may see something and they say oh i want to come out and take a picture of that so i stopped the truck to do that check that the statue that mailbox on the left that was interesting children running up to the mailbox all these vehicles they're doing some construction there and they left so you can see some hikers going down there These are the offshoot roads, right? This is, these are not the roads you normally come if you're hiking. You'd keep on this road here. But I wanted to give you a gist of the area in general. You see some more people running, hiking, whatnot. It's more challenging to come up here. This road actually takes you all the way. It makes like a loop and it goes all the way to St. Anne's and we will actually follow that loop. 
and end in St. Anne's. And when I say end, we're actually going to drive around St. Anne's too. Huh? So keep watching. Those of you who didn't see it, I had a Fort George video. And there I was commenting about some of the narrow roads and stuff. But you, you should notice a difference here, right? Because people are not building willy-nilly on the side of the road, there aren't any cars to overcome either. People are, their houses are built properly with planning. So, you know, you don't see cars just right there and you're trying to drive past or people lime in or whatnot. That happened to, you know, people will say well, that have nothing to do with, um, you know, planning. That's just people can't afford it. Well, you know, really, that's not how it is. You're not really supposed to go and just build whatever anyway. You're supposed to do things properly. And when done properly, um, planning allows for everything to be considered. Are the roads big enough? Can people pass? And all these things are taken into consideration. But, you know, Trinities just build whatever anyway. So you'll notice that difference in the road. Yes, it's narrow. Yes, it's thing. But there are no obstacles to pass or to overcome to get where you're going. And it's really good to see that trash, ban, uh, trash bin there too, midway. Seems to be in the middle of nowhere, but it's serving a purpose because... As people come up here, they're thirsty, they have their, their water bottle, whatever. Um, they throw it away, right? They need somewhere to throw it. It keeps the place clean, you'll notice. It's nice and clean up here. You can't see it well, but as we are going on the side of this mountain ascending, on the right is Port of Spain. There's a lot of trees blocking it, but if 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 you look, if you were driving up here and you looked to the passenger side of the window, you would see it. So I get some traffic here because we're getting closer to a spot where people kind of, um, how do I put it? Like, a, I, I don't know if I call it a parking area, but it's just before the trail. So it's like the last place of the asphalt before they begin their, their trek. And on this particular day, I believe they had a, a, some sort of youth camp or football camp or whatever. So you'll see me blur a lot of it. Uh, just because I don't want to show the um, faces and, of the children and whatnot that are there. I like to respect the privacy, especially of children. interesting architecture going up here there are quite a few guest houses up here by the way you can see how that house juts out from the mountain ledge straight out for me, that would be kind of worrisome, but I know some people don't mind that. So you now start to see a lot of cars parked on the side, and again, that's, as I said, is because on well, that road there on the right, by the way, is where you'd go back to St. Anne's. This area is where people kind of gather to keep the Gwani Trail. So they use it like an impromptu parking space but I don't know if it was really designed for that so this is as far as you can go as this road is concerned um, the rest is a trail now maybe maybe I could have tried to 
drive more but nah they had people there they were having some sort of competition or whatever have you and I didn't want to mess with that there's another video I will have out going up to that area so you can look out for it when I, when I get chance you know I have all these videos sometimes a lot of them are in storage waiting to be processed as I get chance and when I do I release them by the way if you're not familiar with JB's Man Cave I release videos every day people often ask well you know when when's your next video well my next video is every day sometimes two three times for the day so keep looking for them because I I, I produce both long and short videos and when they're long I mean they're long yeah like for instance this video is going on be like an hour and a half Sometimes I might have a video an hour and then I may have a one minute or a few seconds video. It all depends. The short videos are indeed short. They're really made for mobile devices, but you can see them on big screens too. And I record them, a lot of them with the same high resolution. So they are sharp. I try to make videos as sharp as possible. I believe I stopped there because I was just trying to connect with the people, what they were doing, etc. And once I found all that, we continued our road trip. So we ascended as far as we could, and now we're going to descend. So this is Lady Chancellor Hill. If you came up here, this is that's what you would see. Now we're going to turn left there, but there's a vehicle parked there, and really it's not parked in a good place, because to turn I would normally need all the space I can get, but because the vehicle is parked there, I kind of have to um, do some maneuvering. It's a very sharp bend. Definitely it was not intended that you would be coming from that walk area there and then suddenly wanted to come here. There you get the view of Port of Spain in the background. And you can see the Saharan dust very strong today. It's like a mist, right? Or like a, like a fog in the air. You can tell. That's Saharan dust. On a clear day, you would be able to even see the hills on the to the to the south of Trinidad, but not so today. I believe that's another effect of global warming. But I actually have a video for just how bad it can get. Make sure to look for that. And each of these things I'm showing the poster to show the video that I've already created for it. So as we go down here, we are actually going towards a place called St. Anne's. St. Anne's uh, has within the area a an asylum called the St. Anne's Hospital. I have some um, thoughts about that. For me, it's an inadequate place, underfunded, underutilized, and it acts as one big lump, like a prison, for everybody that has mental health issues that are deemed to be a public to word to use. Mm, I don't want to say public nuisance, but maybe violent or aggressive. To, to, you know, I guess somebody that could be erratic enough that they could be considered criminal at some stage. But so they are sent there. But however, there are other areas to the hospital 
where they um, also have um, Alcoholic Anonymous and various things where people go there when they are borderline, I guess. But the hospital is like ancient and it needs an upgrade. We're not going to go in there, but just letting you know what the area tends to be known for. But there's way more to St. Anne's than the hospital. Even though there are a lot of jokes, memes and stuff about it. Even David Rudder, who is a local singer, artist, performer, made a, a song about it. Where he, and as he said, I think, we all mad where we go in St. Anne's. You all know that song? I'm not going to sing it for you, nah, not to embarrass myself. Anyway, this is St. Anne's. St. Anne's is, um, has a mixture of lower, middle, and higher class housing. And you can tell the difference as you go there. Some streets are nice, well kept, others not so much, and then Others like a more um, affluent, wealthy people. There are some side streets here, but you know, they're so short, they're more like cul de sacs. It's not worth attempting to go in there. But you could see the design of the houses that we are passing. These come from, I would say, the 80s. Maybe even 70s, some of them. And if you hear a dog barking in the background, it's just the neighbor's dog. They have dogs that just bark at anything for no reason. They see an ant pass by and they bark. You have neighbors like that, with, with animals like that. Just not trained, just whatever can be very annoying especially when I'm recording so this is all St. Anne's and as we approach here I believe we're going on um, the main road yeah this is the main road so if you entered from the Savannah you kept driving you would eventually come up this road so we're going to turn left We'll go back down later, and we're going to start looking at the areas around here. Now, one thing is nice about St. Anne's, they do maintain green. Look at the inside here. Really lovely area inside of here. The only thing I don't like about St. Anne's is it has a lot of crime. And when I say it has a lot of crime, I'm talking about low-level crime, oh, I don't know if I even should call it low-level, but it have a lot of petty theft. You know, people want to jump over your yard, steal your stuff, whatever. I've even chased a few of those criminals in my younger days, having seen them attempt to steal stuff from our police. We just have a police here in St. Anne's. I'm going to go. Oh, that's actually officially in Cascade, but just off the St. Anne's Road. Anyways, I'm so not going to too much into that. Just going to look at the green. Sometimes, too, you go in an area that looks nice and there's this derelict house. Not necessarily this one, but I'm just saying. Or a house that's not used or whatever, and you think, wow, you know. I would really like to take that house and just develop it. And you wonder, well, why is nobody developing it or finishing it? It looks unfinished. Don't you ever wonder that? Why is it just sitting there? And you could be living in it, right? Well, from experience, um, and why, when I say experience, because my mother used to do a lot of real estate and we used to visit a lot of properties and sometimes try to find out about properties. And oft times it would be that there was some sort of court battle around the, the house or the property. So for you it looks like it's just sitting there doing nothing, but really in the background it's some sort of dispute going on. 
where the house where somebody does want to utilize the house but there's a court order there's some process going on or something so the, the property can't be utilized by anybody until the court matter is settled so a lot of times that's that's the case or sometimes the person is just abroad you know living their life they're retired they don't really care about the property anymore and it's just there and even in those cases when you do try to um, make a purchase you find oh something's wrong with the deed something wasn't done right there's always some kind of red tape especially in this country so as we travel closer to what is going to be soon the St. Anne's, the entrance of the St. Anne's Hospital. We're passing through some areas and you can tell, right? These are the more, I don't want to say rundown areas, but not as, you always see a lot of concrete. That's how you always know an area is not that great. On the left there, that's the St. Anne's Hospital. And on the right, that's the St. Anne's River, which has gotten so high at some point some years ago that it flooded all these areas. Can you believe that? So going up to this road here. Up here you'll see some interesting housing and interesting parking where people again do this where they park on a road that really you shouldn't be parking on. There's no space. And you can see all the garbage, all the old sharks, people, whatever, doing whatever. I mean, I, I don't blame anybody for not being able to afford better housing or better, but that, you know, being poor that is not an excuse for being unclean or dirty. Can you pass there? Look at it, huh? Why would somebody park their vehicle there? I was amazed to be able to pass through this because to me, it did not look like I could do it. But the person wouldn't move their vehicle. So I had to go real slow. That's the kind of thing in Trinidad. Huh? Oh. Why would people park here? Again, real close. And on top of that, they have the wall straight up huh, onto the road. So there's no going left or right. So if you're going to come up here, yep, you need to have patience and you need to know how to drive. Don't come up here thinking that it's going to be an easy task. You see those trees, those pine trees on the top of that mountain there? Eh? We used to go hiking I believe or camping up there or, or a bit to the right and I believe they used to be or still maybe why the Lima lands it was beautiful in those days I was talking about decades ago and it gets really cold up here in the morning when when you used to get up from camping um, just talking you would see the frost coming out your your mouth as you spoke and you wouldn't think that would happen in a Caribbean country, yeah? but it does. I talk about early in the morning, like maybe 4 or 5, even 5.30, before the sun comes out, or just as it's coming out. And it gets that cold. Especially if you do it in um, December, because the winter weather from the north actually reaches us here slightly it takes the um, temperature down you know I would say three or four degrees at night and you wouldn't think it would huh? but it does this is the end of the trail here I guess you could keep on going if you want to hike or bike but I'm not doing that here I'm just Turning around. And the irony of those places too is there, aren't, there isn't really a place to turn around. So I am just trying my best to make do with what I have, the ability. 
Now on the right here, uh, somewhere across here, there's actually a plot, a cemetery. With some history behind it. Right there on the right. Those of you who are familiar with that, feel free to chime in. Had an in interesting house there and cemetery and whatnot. We would kind of like slow it down to see it. Yeah, you see some of the colonial era, era housing as well. Such as that on the left. Where they attach something onto it. A little peak of Port of Spain here too. Gonna go back down the way we came. And in case you don't know, in JB's man cave, we, I tend to do road trips like this, right? Where you know you go into areas that normally you would have never have been, right? Go in here to see, maybe you can see something from this area as we turn left here. This can be seen as one of the better areas, better roads I should say, within the area. But it's not very long, so to turn back. I really like the uh, mailbox on that house. Very colorful. Some of these plants equally as colorful. That's the unique thing about Trinidad. And I've said that in my other videos that you could go in one street and it looks really nice, clean, nice houses, well done landscape. And then the next street over could be total opposite. To me, it all comes down to what kind of pride you have for your surroundings. It has nothing to do with wealth. Eh? I keep saying that. You don't have to have a big house or a nice looking house in order to keep your place clean. It's all about your state of mind. Some interesting designs here, the architecture. I did a little bit of architecture privately with uh, my old drafting teacher from school, Mr. Tull. I think he moved to the UK. Anybody knows him? I'm switching to um, 4x4 here. It's very steep, this hill, mountain. I'm not sure where, where we are as far as hill and mountain goes. Probably we're still on a hill. But you know, <clears throat> other than doing these road trips, I would never come up to these areas. So just as it's new for you, it's new for me as well. One of the nice things about living in, on mountains is the quiet. Well, some mountains, right? Because you could still have mountainous areas that are just full of people. But up here you can see how quiet it is. There are set of limas, a set of traffic, a set of noise. I just, I don't know, the older I get, the dislike I have for noise grows. I just like peace. Check that white cat running. Probably not used to having traffic here. Some nice views of um, Port of Spain from here and the surroundings in St. Anne's. 
<clears throat> I thought this would continue, but it had an abrupt end it. It's interesting the entrance to here because you're climbing, 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 and you th you would think that okay, as it climbs, it climbs to some area, but you climb and then it goes back down into a dead end. And that's unusual. Makes it kind of isolated and um, not sure how I would. I mean, I like living on mountains, but I wouldn't want to live on a dead end. I would, I would have preferred if the road continued, because you, you know, you never want one way in and one way out of any way. So I turned around there, the battery of the camera was out, so I changed it and we continued. Bring back up. And we're going to go continue on the other side too of St. Hans. I like the flowering hedge on the right there. I believe that's Bougainvilliers. And you see the look of that, that country look of the um, light blue house ahead, that's really nice too. I mean, I rather a modern design, but the look for it is okay. Actually, the railings on the porch area there on the top is what gives it its unique look. But I'm actually not focusing on the house per se, I'm just again stop here because Somebody wanted footage of something, probably there's a good look out here of Port de Port of Spain area. And by the way, if you don't know, I have plenty of videos on Port of Spain. If you haven't seen it, make sure to see it. Uptown, downtown, the east side, all around, driving through various looks of Port of Spain. So I'm just waiting for whomever took the picture and then we continue. Some of these retaining walls look like they cost as much as the house itself. But it's very necessary uh, when you're building on mountains. I just don't understand people who build on mountains but don't put any retaining walls what are they thinking when flooding happens when landslides happen you're gonna really be depending on that retaining wall to keep everything set if you're just counting on the earth you're gonna be having trouble and, and i would dare say if you can't afford it double retaining wall don't just one retaining wall double one by the actual house, buried, and the uh, outer one. Yeah, I know that costs a lot, but better that than your house comes, you know, sliding down. So this is taking us to another part of St. Anne's. We're going round and round, rather than just, you know, taking the same path back. Look like you had some interesting roads here, so I thought, you know what, rather than um, skip them, let's go back a bit and see what we can see. And usually if I come to an area like this, I don't come again unless it's trafficked. Now this part here was a bit disappointing because I started to see a lot of trash. And it looks like some people decided to make it a dumping area, which is unfortunate. I just don't understand that. Some of the most unexpected places people would use for dumping. That's a, that part continuing there is private, so cannot continue, so this ends up being like a dead end. 
And right down there in that green, that there was a river passing there. It looks like hair used to be kept at one time. It's also interesting flower and plants, but it hasn't been for a while. Now you can always recognize when areas are maintained. They always have, look at that, look at the amount of croutons here. You can always tell what kind of area it is based on how the landscaping is. And the fact that people are willing to plant flowers on trees. So this road here, and I thought, mm, let's have a look, right? And it's a short one, but who knows? Maybe somebody, somebody in YouTube wanted to see it. I also like to see people how people design and keep their places, huh? If you're renting, you really don't have much control over what you can do. But if you're a homeowner, there's lots you can do. This house on the left was like fluorescent yellow and green. Very unusual. As you get closer to the main road, you could see everything start to change a bit. And as we pass this bridge here, we'll get back onto the main road. Right by those houses on the other side of the river, on the right there, that's where the other road would pass, where we took. Right after the hospital. Now I need to go left, but it's such a sharp turn there that I decided to turn around. But I'll give you an idea of the loop we made. It's main road in St. Thomas. I'm going to turn right. I see um, St. Thomas Hospital entrance up ahead on the road. St. Anne's River on the left. This is the road we originally went up where I couldn't pass. Or I passed, but it was narrow. Looks like a lineman spot there for people. Alright. Now, going up here, I mean, they call it up here Arapita. Um. When I was in my teen years, I had one or two houses up here, but now it's really congested in a way that I don't like. People building their, you know, building your property right onto the road, and you could tell probably without planning approval, doesn't do well for an area. Now I don't know why, but. They decided to build, I think it's called the Cascadia Hotel up here. There's a school on the left, by the way. And the entrance of that school is a bridge, which is interesting. Right there on the left. See there? That's a, that entrance actually crosses a river. St. Anne's River. They decided to build a hotel up here called the Cascadia Hotel. And 
conference center but look at the entrance to it this is all the entrance just you know like a concrete jungle the road is very narrow um, wherever it have green is overgrowth really and I don't know unless you come in by car there's no way in or out you can't even pass here no need enough for one vehicle so I can't I can't see bringing tourists up here honestly and if they decide you know let me walk out what would they be walking towards or to St. Anne's is not like the, the main, by the main road, it's not exactly a nice looking place until you reach by Cascade Road there getting closer to Chinese Association and the, the Prime Minister's residence and so forth that, that starts to get nice but all of this towards the hotel is no good lots of limers, a lot of people with I don't know what they're up to, kind of thing. So it was a weird choice for me. Look, they even now have a car wash up there. This is the hotel here on the left. And that's it there. These have a huge water slide. I think they were the first to do it. I don't know if they still have it. And they also have a huge conference center. I've never actually stayed here, but I did attend the conference center. The facilities are pretty good in the center. That's the conference center there. If you stayed in the hotel, let me know how it was. There's another hotel called Normandy, which is further down the road, but um, we will see that later in the video. We're going to turn left here, going back, going up the mountain. Up here is interesting. It's not as traverse as the lower part of St. Anne's. It's more of a residential area, but it's a mix, a mix of um. I don't know if I would call it squatters, but just people who don't maintain their place as well, and then those that do. However, when I was a teen and came up here, it was way more green, and the road ended by a bunch of residential properties that you would have to walk up to, and we would begin our hike. It was a long winding road going up the mountain that you could take and hike. But um, that has all changed. So all of this was like a surprise for me, huh? seeing so many cars, houses, um, places. I was like, what the heck? And again, you know, like I told you about the, you know, this this thing of parking on the road, and the road can hardly, you know, look at that trash there. Oh my goodness, is this all of this just degrades an area? Have you ever been up here before? Maybe if you have or you used to live in St. Anne's, you can let me know what you think in the comments area of this video on JB's Man Cave. For those of you who don't know why I call it JB's Man Cave, well, a man cave is basically an area where the man of the home would have a place where he could just chill out, hang out, do what he wants to do without having to worry about, you know, what others in the home would think. 
It's like a room. Some men will have it like for for as sports, you know, like maybe they may play some table tennis, a big screen TV, watch some videos, hang out with the guys, whatever. So the reason I call it a man cave is because I am showing the kind of videos that I like. You know, the channel, like I said in the description section, could be about places I visit, things I did, how to do something yourself. It's a, it's a variety of things that I like. So I'm just sharing it with you. Some people come on the channel thinking that, you know, I should be focusing on this or that, but that's like going in somebody's man cave and telling them they need to redesign it to suit them. That, that's not how it goes. I'm sharing the stuff that I like. Hopefully you like it too, and that's why you're part of JB's man cave. By the way, the man has nothing, has nothing to do with it being men only or anything like that. Huh? All ladies welcome. Anybody's welcome. To view, subscribe, you could subscribe for free. This road almost seems like it never stops, right? But yeah, it does. It does come to an end at some point. And you can see that the variance of the road will change at some point in time. So for me, a lot of this area here is kind of new. I don't know when it began and end, but it was that you used to be that you would reach us like dead end and it would just be houses and then it would stop. But I'm not I'm not quite sure, but I think this is a continuance. I haven't been up here for a while, eh? not since my days as a teen. Going to hike and stuff. So this is where it ends. Not sure what goes on beyond. Maybe it's a uh, its own private community. I don't know. It would have been nice to see more of it, but unfortunately I can't. Things have changed a lot in Trinidad and a lot of people have gated off their communities and made it a private property and stuff. Now the interesting thing about here is that if you came up here and you didn't have a purpose in going straight through that gate, you would find it immensely difficult to turn around, as I am finding it right now. And right there, where the vehicle is now, is a precipice going straight down. There is no railing, which... To me, there should be, and roads like this on a mountain should have some sort of railing or barrier, regardless to if it's near private property or not. Because I mean, any vehicle could lose brakes, lose control, or whatever, and that could be, you know, real trouble. Now they do have these enormous chains. You could see they're in white on one side, but not on the side where I was turning. This is a huge chain. Maybe it used to be longer before and they started stealing it. Because that's one thing that goes on in Trinidad too. Eh? I even have a video for that where people are stealing cables. Overhead cables to get the copper and the metal from roads. The same barriers, they steal that. They steal drain covers, pavement covers, all, ki all kinds of things. Anything they could get a hand on, they're stealing it. That's just sad. So that's what this area of St. Anne's looks like. You could see how far up and high in the valley it is.
but it's nice. See for the areas you have to pasture that look kind of derelict. Have you been through here before? Let me know in the comments area. I'd like to hear about it. Feel free to give any history about the area as well. Up there, like I said, you used to go and climb this mountain and you would get to these pine trees and you used to hike and camp there. But um, now it's blocked off. You know anything about the area? You can always comment about it. I like to hear when people tell, and there may be people who are watching this are older than me, and can give their vision. Because you know what I know about the area is really just what I know. I may research a bit about it, but not extensively. I'm no historian. You can see one of the cables there that's cut on the left. Are you seeing those cables that have been cut? You could see them hanging. Really ridiculous. When you're going around these corners, if you ever decide to drive, make sure to hit your horn. That alerts drivers coming around the corner to know you are there. Especially with people who park their vehicles on corners, which is really annoying. Because when they do that, they force you to be on the other person's lane. By the way, something else that I also create a lot of is videos about the kind of crazy driving that goes on in Trinidad. You can make sure to look for that. One thing that this video does too, for especially for a lot of people from abroad who have never been to the Trinidad or the Caribbean, is it gives you an idea of what the Caribbean looks like. This is what the Caribbean looks like, especially Trinidad. It's not the um, the brochure of the sandy beaches with coconut trees and white sand and stuff. That is part of the Caribbean and a small part of it. The actual part where people live is, is more like what you see in these videos. However, I would agree that other islands do keep that atmosphere more than others. Huh? Especially the islands that count a lot on tourism, like let's say a Barbados or Grenada or something. They really focus on keeping their place looking good, um, keeping their beaches nice and so forth. They have to because that's the part of where their GDP comes from. Anyway, this is a nice little part of St. Anne's. Some very nice designs up here. Not that red brick one that's not finished, but I'm talking about some of the other house designs. Really nice, you can only left and the right. Very interesting. Looks like that road wants to continue, but it goes into green. So I decided, let me back away, turn around, head back out.
Again, living on a mountain, peaceful. That's why I like it. And in case you're wondering, houses here would be millions of dollars. Trinidad and Tobago dollars, that is. One Trinidad dollar would be, depending on how you look at it, at it. If the exchange for US is about six dollars and ten cents, and if they had to buy it, it'd be about six dollars and eighty cents. And on the black market, it can go up as much as eight or nine dollars that people pay for US. But anyway, um, millions of dollars turn out to be dollars is really out of the reach of most people, and so they ended up they end up just being in an apartment or renting or whatever or staying by somebody um, and it's really ridiculous it never used to be that way it used to be more affordable to get homes when I was a teen there was a way for you to get it now not so much at all even if you have a very good job or you you know, even if you were an executive, you might still have feel the crunch of, let's say, taking out a mortgage. It's just not that accessible. And to live in what I would quote unquote normal area, where there isn't a set of people lining or crime or whatever, just, you know, quiet residential place, not necessarily fancy or anything. You literally have to pay millions for that, which is really sad. Again, trying to pass here, roads not made for two vehicles. This is where the Cascadia Hotel is. Huh? They, they, again, like I was showing you, tourists would have to pass here. Imagine there isn't even a, a pavement for people to walk on. And the first thing tourists will see is all of this as they're coming out of here. I, I just don't get it. There should be some requirement, at least most definitely for houses by the road. To, for the upkeep, they don't have to be pretty, huh? but they have to be upkept, man. Old fridge, garbage, bush. We really cannot sell ourselves as a tourist nation. Keep it in place looking so shabby. Right, so we came back here before. This is where I turned around and made the loop. You're going back out to St. Anne's now, passing the St. Anne's Hospital on the right there. You can see a really old colonial house on the right as well, falling apart. Not in this section here, not much has changed in many years. Many, many years. Still looks the same. So this is all flat. No more mountainous areas. We will turn somewhere along here. Start watching some of these residential areas. This, this, these parts of St. Anne's are not too bad. Not necessarily fancy or anything, but you know. They're good at keeping their place clean. You can you notice the road, despite being terrible, it looks like it can really use some paving. The area itself is more or less okay. They have their own little park, which is good. 
The great thing about living in areas like this is that it's close proximity to Port of Spain proper, the city. Shopping areas or whatever. I don't know other places in around Port of Spain. I mean, you don't necessarily have to go in the city to shop. There's malls nearby, plazas nearby. And of course, you have the actual savannah itself. You could go and exercise, run, do whatever you like. In the back here could be a maze, some water, so I'm trying to decide which way to go, left, right, wherever. Lots of um, apartment buildings in the back here too. These three story buildings are new, at least for me. There were apartment buildings here before, but I don't remember seeing those big ones. This one here on the left, yes, that's been here for quite a while. Some of these houses have been here for quite a while, for sure. You see that huge retaining wall in the background? That is Massey. Used to be known as Hilo Food Stores. During the coup, there was a coup attempt here, 1990, July 27th. During the coup, that was one of the groceries that was raided. That road on the left there, that takes you to Cascade. We're not going there today, that's another video. We're going to take this road here on the right, next to the convent. That place on the left there, that red roof, that used to be our drugstore at one time. Now that's the convent on the right there. And this road has taken on some changes. It looks similar, but the, some of the changes is, for instance, they put a um, hotel on the left. It used to be just apartments, but now it's a hotel. You see it coming up there. Chancellor. And that church, St. Anne's Roman Catholic Church, I did a separate video for that. It's very nice. If you haven't seen it, make sure to look for it. So school on the left. Now this path, this road also takes you to the botanical gardens. It's one other way of getting there. Not too many people know about it. And on the left is St. Bernadette's. Also, I have a video for that as well. Now you see the road there, that, that would take you into the botanical gardens. You notice the big sign saying no entry. You could, at one time you could actually go straight through there, but um, that was when I was a teen, you could go straight through there, but they blocked it off, put a gate, etc. A lot of crime started happening there. People would pass through there in the night and do their thing. And so they put up gates and coordinate off and I mean you can still access it but only as a pedestrian and I think they don't allow you to go in there at night anymore <laughs> I 
This is where I parked in order to take some shots of St. Bernadette's and the church. And once I was done, we continued our drive. Make sure to look for those videos. For those of you who don't know, usually I would record one video of the entire road trip driving and then create individual videos for places where I stopped. I don't like mixing the two because then the video would be long and forever and you would miss certain things. So I also record the two videos in different resolutions. At least for now. But um, for instance, in this, these road trips like this, driving in my truck, I would record it in 2.7K. And when I'm outside recording specific areas, I would record it in 5.3K. But uh, my camera in the truck is getting older and starting to fail. I mean, it's one of the older GoPros. It's a GoPro 4 Plus. I have the silver and the black. I use the silver and the truck because it has a viewing screen. This, there's a little road, this little road here. This little path here, by the way, has changed a lot. Those apartments on the right is Wide Lima apartments. I don't know if they still call that. But the part on the opposite with the junk food areas, that's new. Never used to be there before. Anyhow, this is a nice hotel, Normandy. Sometimes they have little fats things there. There's a swimming pool. I have never stayed here. I had a reason for it, but I have passed through here now and again. I like how it's kept. It has a modern look to it. Again, I also like the proximity to Port of Spain too. I, c I can't remember. Is this Nook Avenue? I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, all those places opposite. That was just open land green. I noticed they put um, like a little shopping plaza there. Well, I shouldn't say shopping, it's really food, mostly food. You see that little bakery there on the right, bread basket? That's been there quite a while too, making a lot of nice pastries and stuff. I don't eat that anymore, but I remember it. On the left here, right opposite there, by the way, before we turn in, that's the Boy Scout headquarters. And this bridge is unique. This bridge has un been unchanged since I was young. Looks like it came from the colonial area. I believe this is Coblin's Gardens and um, that big building up, up ahead, I think that's a guest house, was not there. It used to be a park. This is also a place on the left here, which sadly has been in the news a lot for the affairs of whatever goes on there. I won't get into that too much. Just go around this circle here. I always appreciate when a road has a roundabout it. To me, every residential place should have like that, a, a roundabout. So everybody gets to where they're going. They could easily access in and out you don't have to be like turning around trying to find somebody's gate open or whatever that's planning this residential community has been here forever some of the houses you can tell they were had a old colonial look and have been modernized um, in fact I think most of them here are some are still maintaining its old look. Just replacing the windows or whatever. And some 
have been modernized. But again, you see the round one makes it easy, right? In and out. It's a nice little community. I don't know how they appreciate it with that huge guest house being built there. It's kind of like a unusual look for the area. Entrance is fabulous as well, right? Look all that green, the bridge, everything maintained. So on the right is if you ever wanted to get to the prime minister's house, well, the, uh, I can't remember the diplomat's house or something. The other they call it. Um, you would turn there, where the police vehicle came out. On the left is the Boy Scout headquarters, which still looks the same. On the right is President's grounds. Up on the left there, that's the Hilton, the one side of it. The road on the left where the cars are coming out, that is, takes you to Cascade, which will be another video. If you enjoyed today's video and appreciate my long talking and time I went into this, feel free to go to JB's Man Cave and hit the donation button and, shh, you know, if you can, mon monetarily support the work that I do. If you can't, you can't afford it, well... No problem. You keep on watching. Let your friends know what JB's Man Cave. Ask them to subscribe. It's free. This is the Savannah. We're going around and we're heading back into Port of Spain. But the video pretty much ends here. And I appreciate you watching um, St. Anne's and the rest of the surrounding areas. Thanks so much.